heck is going on with the shy? <laughs> Y'all got to help me out here. I am confused about a lot of things this episode. One, why the heck is Gemma crying? Wasn't she this liberal free thing? Didn't Britney just meet her daddy in this episode and she's talking how much she likes her and that they have potential? I am confused. Now Jake is the liberal free one. Jake says the rudest thing. What? You only want me to you for the rest of my life? I'm 18. So? Do you want me for the rest of your life? Which is true though. I'm not even going to lie. They're 18 and it's like, it's just going to be them. There should just be friends with benefits because I don't understand what kind of relationship Jake is thinking he wants to work on. But whatever it was, Gemma was clearly hurt and crying, which that's the pot calling the kettle black. What was Gemma dancing on? I'm confused right now. Gemma was pumping on air. Brittany not even paying her attention. And how about this? Now I get it. If you, you like who you like, but you expect me to believe and I've heard a lot of people say this, like women that like other women. But what Brittany said, once you be with a woman, you'll never go back. You like who you like. I still think something would be missing. And by that, I mean a big thing. I feel like the writers really don't like the church. To each his own. But can y'all name one person in the church that's making a difference? Not everybody in church is messed up and dysfunctional. Like everybody? The first lady sees Jake. And within three minutes, she's on her knees telling this dude, please, where did that come from? And then the preacher's daughter, I mean, I know a bunch of preacher's kids. I'll give you that. But the preacher's daughter with Zay in the parking lot of an empty lot smoking substance. Now, the preacher is preaching about prosperity and Papa's mother has a huge problem with the preacher. Now. I believe that they marked the preacher after this reverend called Reverend Ike. He was an amazing preacher. He taught about prosperity. And I know a lot of people like to say how evil money is. But if money is so evil, I'm with Jake. Stop passing the basket around asking for money. I'm just saying my cup runneth over over here. If you make people think money is evil subconsciously, they're always going to be broke because why would you be given something that is so bad? You feel me? Or you don't. And that's fine. However, let me get off of my rants. Now, stealing from church is a different thing. Just wrong. They just put a whole bunch of bad church situations in one episode. They just like, just throw it all in there. Let's mix it up. We don't even know the preacher's wife's name. All we know is she likes to squab a knob of a random stranger. It's weird. I'm just saying the episode, it wasn't put together right. So I'm going to give this one a five, four, five, five. See, I was all set. I was ready. I do not like Papa's mother. They made her the stereotypical angry church going woman that's hypocritical. Your fast daughter probably lured him there. The father would probably roll over in his grave right now. You got a point, Papa. If I need your help, I'll ask for it. I just feel like your mama don't want me around. Everybody in the church is not that bad. And I don't like people that because you don't agree with them, they want to throw your dead parent into this. What? Don't sit there because Papa is making a choice and he wants to go to a different church. Stop trying to control that young man by bringing up his father. He's grieving too. And then she's going to toss Bakari aside to make him feel like he's unwanted and abandoned again. I have a problem with her. Y'all better leave my Bakari alone. But don't get mad at Papa for wanting to be prosperous. Now, I already know him and the preacher is going to fall out. He's going to see the preacher's evil ways because I could see it. Now, there is such thing as liking money and just being an a-hole. Which something tells me this preacher is a all out a-hole. He seems like the type of person that takes your life savings, puts it into his church, his pockets, and then he's on to the next. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. That's what I don't like. Speaking of the shy being mad at the church, why was they at church? I'm still trying to figure out. Like, church was the new club in this episode. So he picks up the pastor's daughter? Really? Let's be bad. I'm from up north. But what they say about Southerners, 
they're nice and mean. And Northerners are mean but nice. Oh my gosh, that is so true. See, Southern hospitality, they seem all nice and gentle, but inside they could be messed up. And Northerners, we come across as aggressive and, and maybe not so nice, but our hearts, it's beautiful most of the time. Once you get past the exterior and the debris. And don't let me be late for a meeting. I believe the shy heard your prayers and they toned Keisha down. She is making breakfast for her man Emmett in bed. And I have yet to see these people wear a condom. She's cooking a bun in her oven. Darnell brings his other son to meet Emmett. Now his son seems so sweet and Emmett will not give this guy a chance. I think this son is going to cause drama between Jada and Darnell. Why do you say that? Did you see the way Darnell cut off Emmett when Emmett was like, how old are you? He was like, yeah, about the same age, like trying to brush it off. You got Darnell spending holidays with this boy's mama. I see conflict. Something's going on with Emmett's brother. I don't know what, but I think like maybe he lost his mother recently or something happened. Because all of a sudden it's like Darnell is really wanting him to bond with Emmett and the family. Like he doesn't have something. Something's definitely going on. So now the preacher wants Papa to be his assistant, which is going to be a bad idea. Papa is going to learn the ways of the church and the negativity. I think he will take this assistant job. And it's sad because he does such a good job working with Emmett. Emmett now has an opening for his brother, Alonzo, creeping in on the shot. Now, Alicia still likes him. And he knows this because he cleans into her like as if he's going to kiss her. And then he just tells her she looks tired. And Alicia pays him back by giving his coat to her new lover, Shard. Yeah, I got to stop this old lady stuff because Alicia looks darn good for her age. In general, how about in general? It seems like the preachers after Papa is like a vendetta that he has against Papa's father. What you think about this episode? I really need to know. I am Amina Rose. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. I am trying to grow. And if I miss something that you just want to talk about, comment down below because it was pretty laxer to me 